Hello everyone, and welcome to So Many Games for Little Time. My name is Joachim Sutter, as usual, and today we're starting with something new. It's a new type of video, and it's basically which games I've played this month, so January 2021. I'm also going to be making videos about what I've painted every month, and maybe something else that I'm not sure of yet. So, I played about 15 games this month, uh, some were at home, some were at work, so basically those two places. These are also the only places where I can play because of the COVID situation, of course. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to talk a little bit about the games, how they went, maybe how I did, um, but just in general why I played them and how I felt about them. It's not going to be very much in-depth, but just, you know, some information in general. All right, let's take a look at the first one. And the first one is uh, Yukon Airways. I played this game once, all right. So this is the back of the box. All right, so you can see that as well. It's a very cute game. It's very beautiful. Uh, it's made by, what's his name again? Al Leduc. Uh, and basically he, where is it again? It's Schwatka Lake in White Horse. Um, and that's where it takes place. But basically he made this game because of his father, you know, as a kind of remembrance of his father. Um, so it has a lot of theme. He tried to put in as much theme as possible. And it looks really amazing. It looks really nice, the game. Um, Strategy-wise and so on, it's not that difficult. I mean, you quickly know how to play. It's only six rounds, so time really flies by. I've only played with two players. Um, and I think the box has 60, 90 minutes, and it's, it's true. Basically, basically, what you do is you pick up passengers and you try to deliver them uh, to the places on the map. Um, and you never take more than, I think the maximum would be like maybe three or four that you could take maximum every round so it's not a lot but it has to do with card play um, and the cool part is every time you drop off a passenger uh, if the colors are combined if it's the same color of, of cube that you can pick up and uh, or if you have like a certain card combo you can always do an upgrade and the game has so many upgrades so and you can keep upgrading it's like every round you're like ooh, what am i going to upgrade now or maybe even twice or sometimes even thrice so maybe more you know i've we've only played once so we've only just you know explored it a little bit um replay value i think it's okay for a bit but not a lot because the locations will always be the same okay the card draw is random there are some objectives but it's not very impressive to be honest I think it's a game, you know, I might play maybe once a month or once every two months, but uh, I like it. And so far, I see no reason not to keep it in my collection. Um, yeah, so this is Yukon Airways. I like it. If you like pickup delivery games, this one is, uh, is short and sweet, I would say. Maybe not that short, but definitely sweet. Okay, so Yukon Airways. Let's move on to the next one. And that is, let me put this away. Because you'll see, you actually see the gaps behind me, right? I took all the games out. I'll have to put them back again later. Um, so, the next one is Great Western Trail. Alright, I played this twice in the last month. So, this is the back of the box. Okay, so basically in the Great Western Trail, you are cattle ranchers and you're trying to bring your cattle, well, you will bring your cattle to Kansas City, but you're trying to make sure that you earn as many points as possible because you're going for victory points. But it's a game by Alexander Pfister. So it's a, it's a point salad. It's just points literally everywhere that you look. So you always feel like you're doing something good and it also causes AP, of course. I've played it twice and I've ordered the expansion. So that's how much we loved it already. Um, yeah, there's so much AP basically. Uh, I mean, there's too many options on your turn every time. Should I go faster? Should I go to every building along the route? Because you're placing your own buildings. People are placing their buildings. People might be trying to block off certain roads. Um, yeah, there's so much to talk about, to be honest. And the funny thing, 
what I actually want to say about this game is it was on my shelf of shame or shelf of opportunity as people call it now um, for three years. I bought it in 2017. So for the longest of times, and this is at number 11 on the Board Game Geek ranking. And I don't know, I think it's the cover that, that, that doesn't do it for me. It's just the, the cover of the box. I don't know, I think it just put me off. But now that we've played, like I said, we really played twice. I like it, you know, and uh, there's no reason for me to get rid of it. So I'm definitely going to keep it. And um, yeah, I'm always saying that I'm going to keep it because at the moment I'm at like at 150 games. And you might look at the stack here. It's becoming a problem. So I have to get rid of stuff as well. Anyway, Great Western Trail, really nice game. Um, like I said, you collect cows, you try to go to Kansas City while passing um, all these different buildings. At the same time, you can, you can also make your train move to make delivering the cattle cheaper. And the farther on the track you go, the, the bigger the rewards you can get. You can recruit engineers, craftsmen, cowboys that all give you different types of uh, advantages and bonuses. And yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm not going to go too much into detail, but really nice game, which is why we played it twice and I was happy to. Next one is oh, Waste Nights. This is a little bit heavier, right? Now, the back of the box is also just Waste Nights. I did an unboxing for this, so if you want to see what's in the box, you can check the video. But basically, this is um, one of the typical, like, you know, Wasteland, Badlands, Mad Max style of thing, Borderlands, if you played that before, right? Uh, Fallout and so on. And you would think this is an uh, open world sandbox, but, and, and maybe it is. But the scenario that we played was very much on rails. It's just like, go there now, go there now, go there now. But you have so many cool characters, like really cool characters, and everybody starts with a vehicle already. You can get a camel, and I think that's a bonus Kickstarter. You can get um, motorbikes, you can get light vehicles, uh, medium, heavy. Um, they all impact the gameplay, of course. And yeah, you have a lot of fighting, a lot of die, dice rolling, die rolling. So um, if you like a dice chucker, this game is definitely for you um you'll be collecting a lot of items and so on and of course you have the book of tales i think it's called the book of tales i don't know i have so many story games now that i mix up all the all the names of the the titles of the books basically you you encounter something you look up the number you say what happens you make a choice right and then you continue and that's what we did here as well um i can say thematically there's a lot of story you know, really invested and well written and so on. So I really liked it. We only played it. <coughs> sorry, we only played it once, um, mostly because new Kickstarters arrived and, and, and I made videos and I painted and, and other games came along. Um, so yeah, I'm planning to play this mostly solo. I think, um, unless of course my friends say no, we want to get this back to the table. Uh, but it was good. It was good. Uh, even though we didn't play it 100% correct, I have to say. Not easy though. The game is not easy. Also, keep that in mind. Anyway, Waste Nights it was a Kickstarter. I almost didn't back it, and then I backed it, and then I forgot I backed it, and then I received it, and now I'm a happy man. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely like this one. So, Waste Nights. Next is. Oy. Dice Throne. Now, I have an unboxing as well from the Kickstarter Dice Throne Adventures pledge, right? You can go and watch that if you want. But this is season one, right? And this is the only one I played this month because just trying to get a feel. I played the uh, Paladin versus the Ninja, right? Actually, technically I played twice, but the first game I only played halfway. Then we had visitors and I put it away. So really like it. Really like it. Can't wait how to see. Can't wait to see how adventures exactly works. Dice Throne Adventures. Um, it's pretty. It's quick. 
uh, I like a dice chucker. This is a dice chucker. You know, you roll dice, you get your uh, points every round that you can then spend on new cards or, or in some cases, if your character allows rerolls and so on. So, yeah, it's really nice. But I did play the solo mode. And you might say there's no solo mode. It's not in the box. No, but you can find it on Board Game Geek or just type Google, you know, dice throw on solo and you'll find it. And it works. It's a really good solo mode. The AI starts with 80 points. They use their cards and everything. Um, they don't use any special abilities though. Uh, with that, I mean the, the only card that gets upgraded is their defense. Um, this is purely for people who know how the game works, of course. And, um, the cards they draw, they just count up the CP and then something happens depending on a, on a little table, right? But it works because it really went down to the wire. I think I survived with only four HP left. Anyway, so really like this, really beautiful, amazing, and uh, yeah, fantastic game. All right, next. Also, it's a Roxley game and I'm becoming a huge Roxley fan, I have to say. All right. Next is oh, this one, Terraforming Mars. Now, I have three boxes, the main box, okay, the base game, then I have the turmoil box, and I have the Venus next. Now, basically I have all the expansions there are, I just put them all in these boxes. There was a Kickstarter that offered a big box solution but I already have all the tiles I already upgraded so many parts but I'll make a video about that later but um, so yeah I decided not to do it so I'm stuck with these three boxes I wanted to have the big box just the box but it was not an option in the Kickstarter you had to buy everything else as well which I wasn't gonna do so we played uh, Terraform Mars twice in January but the end of December, we also played it a couple of times. So we played it a lot in the last month and a, and a week, you know. So, I don't know, it's just, it's an amazing game. You know, engine builders, so many cards, so many combos, so many ways every turn you have, you have to buy cards, but then you want to buy all the cards most of the time, but then you spend too much money and then they, they, they clog up your hand. I mean, they don't really clog up, but they, they just hang around and you're like, yeah, I might use them next round or next round or next round. I've had games where I bought cards the first round, finished the game, never used them. And then you say, well, which means you're bad at the game. <laughs> Maybe I am. <laughs> it's just, yeah, so many options always. An amazing, amazing game. And um, like I said, I really upgraded this game a lot. And that's another series of videos I'll be doing where I'll... Uh, into detail about what exactly I added to every game. Um, okay, so for now I haven't played Turmoil yet. I've played with all the other expansions. I don't play with Venus. I use the cards, but I remove the Venus cards with the, the specific Venus requirements and everything um, because I really dislike Venus. But you know, that's a personal thing. But uh, I'm hoping to soon try Turmoil. All right, so that's Terraforming Mars, a classic, classic. If you've never played it, play it, even if you think it doesn't, maybe because the cards don't look that fantastic, but play it anyway, really. You will not regret it. Okay, that was Terraforming Mars. Or maybe you will regret it. You never know, right? People have different tastes. Then we have Tainted Grail. Why do I only have the manual? Because I suffer from the manual syndrome. And that means when I play a game, I put everything away, it's back on the shelf, and then what do I see in a corner somewhere? The manual. Anyway, here's the box. I took it out. Actually, I didn't need to because behind me, this side, is everything else. There's some two parts here, the rest is here. All right. So, anyway. Tainted Grail, Fall of Avalon. Now, I played this only, I played this twice. Once I started with the um, tutorial, uh, but then I didn't really count the tutorial as a play. So then I started for real and yeah, it was really nice, but the same problem as I had with Waste Nights. I played one evening, 
new stuff arrived, wanted to make videos, wanted to paint, and so on, and then ended up not playing a second time. But I really want to play soon. Now maybe once the uh, unboxings finally finish, because there's a lot of Kickstarters coming, I'll be able to get this to the table faster, have some more time to play. It's the irony, right? My YouTube channel is so many games for little time, and it's my YouTube channel which is causing me to have even less time to play. Anyway, I think this one is very popular, right? So, Untainted Grail is basically the world where it's a fantasy world, right? Where uh, Arthur and the Round Table and so on, they were protecting the land and, and chasing away all the magic and everything. But then they left and now everything is basically going very bad, to put it mildly. I'm not going to use the, the, the correct language and everything of what's... I think it's the weirdness that's, that's in the world. Anyway, fantastic looking game. It looks really nice. One day I'll probably paint the miniatures. Um, the coins that came with it uh, are really nice, the dials. Yeah, the art is nice, the monsters are cool. I think the only gripe I have with it so far is when a monster appears. It doesn't really stick around for long if you kill it. So, I don't know about the miniatures. But anyway, so I played this, really liked it. Use the app when you play as well. It's really nice, it's free. They read everything out from the book. Adds a lot of theme. Okay, so Tainted Grail. I only played once, but hopefully I'll be playing again soon. And hopefully I will then remember to put the manual back into the box. Okay, now I have one more game, one more physical game, because some of the games I don't have with me here, because I didn't play them here or I don't own them. Now, the one I played is, the one I'm going to show now, is the one I've played the most this month. So, and that is Monsterlands. I played a Monster Lands five times this month. I got it from uh, my family, actually, from uh, my sister uh, she, who bought it for me. Or my mother, one of them, ordered from Amazon. And um, it was on my wish list, but pretty low, actually. You can check my wish list uh, videos to find out where exactly it was. It was pretty low because I really liked the way it looked and everything, but you know it's dice placement and i already have a lot of dice placement games but it's really good it has 10 solo scenarios in the in the manual in the back i've already done four of them i think yeah because i also played one regular game um, with two players which is also really nice because it's a completely different dynamic it's cool you know you're in a world where monsters have taken over everything. You're like the last bastion. So basically you're hiring warriors, gearing up and going outside to fight monsters, trying to protect the city. Um, and every round is like, who's going to attack the monster? Are they going to succeed? How much are you going to push your luck? So it's really interesting. I like the artwork so much. And this is a retail version. So it doesn't have all the bling bling from the Kickstarter. And I've checked, you can get an upgrade on their website and it looks really nice, some of the parts. But some of the parts I'm not sold on. So maybe if I have a financial windfall at one point, I might splurge on it, but it's not necessary for now. But it's definitely a keeper because I like it. Uh, I like the, the puzzle that you need to solve every time with more than, one, more than well, basically more than one person. <laughs> because with the AI, you don't know where they're going to go, but let's just say the monsters you're fighting are less of a problem because when the, if the AI ends up fighting the monster, the monster is automatically defeated. So, you know, it makes it a little bit easier in, in, in some cases. But anyway, I want to play this with three or four. I've only played with two so far. I'm going to play with three or four, see how that goes. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to play a uh, how to play in a playthrough video. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely going to make a how to play and a playthrough video for this game because I really like it. I played this the most five times. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, you might notice something has changed behind me, around me. It's a different setting. It's because when I uh, finished recording, I realized I had forgotten one game. 
and that game is Coimbra. Okay, amazing game, amazing game. I love it, but I'm really bad at it. I checked the BG Stats app. I played it three times. Once this month, twice in the past. I am always lost. And I was joking about it. I told my friends, you know, this is a funny game. I played it twice. I love it, but I was twice lost. I was, I was lost twice in the past. So maybe I'll be lost again today. And then they were like, oh yeah, it would be so funny if you were. And then I was lost by 40 points. 40. I played so bad. Anyway, this is what the box looks like. Okay. It is amazing. It is dice placement, dice drafting. Uh, then you also have to choose which uh, people you hire. And you have to take care of the tracks that you see here. You have to uh, also, so tracks you see here. You also have the traveling around. You have to keep an eye on the end of game scoring bonuses. There's a lot of things that you have to think about. It's gorgeous, it's really beautiful, and a lot of AP uh, <laughs> is really awesome. It's really awesome. It's such a good game. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it. But I'm so bad at it. Oh my God. Okay, so now I'll go back to the original footage that I made, and uh, I'm sure I inserted it somehow. <laughs> All right, here we go. And the next one is Race for the Galaxy. So I'll be showing some pictures as well now because I don't have the physical box here. And I played Race for the Galaxy at, uh, at work with uh, my colleague. It was actually my colleague who bought it for uh, my birthday. And I used to own it like pff, eight, nine years ago when I was still living in Belgium. And I liked it then, but because I was moving to Hong Kong, I just sold all my games. I had like 60 back then, sold them all. Maybe one or two that I left at my parents. Came to Hong Kong, bought a bunch of games again. So yeah, basically restarted my collection. But Race for the Galaxy, an amazing game. You know, you can play it so fast. There's so many options. It's um, basically, you have a bunch of cards in your hand. You start with the starting planet. I think you start with uh, the advanced version would give you nine cards. No, I'm sorry. You always start with six cards and get rid of two. So you start with four. You have development cards, you have planets, and you can build both. But your cards are also money. So if you use your card for money, you cannot use what's on the card anymore. You discard it. You pay for the other cards with other cards. And then that's not the only cool part because, of course, it causes gut-wrenching decisions sometimes. But also, you have um, five steps you always have to choose from every round. And you do it secretly. And when you choose that step, that action, and the other person doesn't, then the other person can also do that action, just a little bit less powerful. And if you play the advanced version, you can choose two actions of the available five. Well, technically it becomes nine because several are double, right? So... Yeah, this is so many cards in the deck as well. I also ordered one expansion already. Even though online you can read that many people say, oh, I've played 300 games with just the base game. I don't know, but I'm a sucker for expansions. What can I say? And I like to expand the game and see more cards and, you know. Anyway, I think this will be a game that we'll bring out a lot, like for a lunch break, to be honest. Because I think in, like, you can knock it out in like a quick 30 minutes or shorter depending on how fast you build cards. Because the game ends if you have either uh, 12 cards in your tableau or the first person who has, uh, who, oh, no, no, not the first person, or just when all the points that are uh, put in the pool in the beginning of the game, when they are gone, the game also ends. So there's two end game triggers. But yeah, that's Race for the Galaxy. Uh, definitely check it out. You also have Roll for the Galaxy. I used to own that too. <laughs> and I want to own it again at one point. Check that out too. All right, then uh, another one that I played is a game I don't own. This is my uh, colleague who owns it. It's called Honey Buzz. And that has also gotten a lot of buzz, pun intended. And it's a very 
beautiful game like really really overproduced really nice has so many nice components all the bees except the one special bee looks a bit weird but yeah even in instagram photos you most of the time it's not included in people's photos it's kind of funny it's kind of felt style it's, 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 it's weird anyway so like the first person the first player has like a, a little honey pot and like a some kind of spoon i don't know how you call it to eat honey um there's some like the the flower uh the, the nectar i guess that you can uh, get from different flowers they all have like this gel style tokens really really nice really beautiful um we've played it twice now and uh one time i lost horribly the first time i won second time i lost horribly uh but there's especially with the second play it really opened up we saw so much so many well no my other two colleagues saw so many more strategies i just messed up from the start um just a really really poor play but basically you go around with your bees uh you are uh, basically creating your hive by getting tiles and if you form basically a circle with like an opening in the middle then you activate everything in that circle you can do all those actions and also when you're gathering and you find uh, like a certain flower and it matches the pattern of your circle like red white certain pattern then you can put it in produce honey and so on sell it and, and so on so on so on so on so yeah it's it's just a nice game it just works do i want it in my collection um not as long as i know him <laughs> because i can just ask him to play so it's not uh that i think like i need this game i will play it every time no worries when he asks i'll say yeah sure let's go but uh, especially with my space problems now, it's not necessary to add it to my collection just yet. Next one is Seasons. Seasons is my number one game, at least last time I checked. I love Seasons. I can talk for hours about Seasons. I am not going to talk about Seasons for hours because we don't have hours. But Seasons is just amazing. It looks beautiful, amazing art. The dice are really thick um it has so many nice components it has brain burner moments um every every game is different especially when you have the expansions there are so many cards um yeah it's just it's, for me it's perfect so basically what happens is at the beginning of the game you get nine cards uh you can do a draft style and so people you know take one pass it on take one pass it on until you have nine cards three of them will be moved for the third year Three of them will be moved to the second year and you start with three cards. So you're all mages in a mage tournament, by the way. So you choose the cards that you put in your two and three, obviously. And then you roll the dice for every season. So you start with the first season, you roll the dice. Everybody chooses a die. You do the actions, you summon cards, you pay for stuff, you get energy and so on. Then the last die that was not chosen will uh, has certain pips on it, one, two, three. And then the marker of the seasons will go forward those amounts of pips, right? those, those amount of steps it will go forward. So you can purposely try to make the game faster or slower depending on how you're playing. And then once you go over to the next season, there's a new color of dice, roll again, and so on, so on, so on. And it's three, three years, okay? So every time in the second year, when the second year starts, you take the cards from the second year. When the third year starts, you take the cards from the third year. And yeah, you try to get rid of all your cards because they're minus points at the end. You have bonus actions that you can do. Some cards really combo with each other. It's just, to me, it's, it's, it's the best game there is. Um, I've played a lot of new games though. So I don't know if I do, when I do a ranking again, if it will still be my number one. But, you know, I'm going to stop myself now. I'm going to stop talking about it because I'll never stop talking about it. Okay. The next one we played was uh, Res Arcana, also played it twice. And uh, Res Arcana, you're also mages, I guess. Um, similar, uh, I can't say similar to Seasons, but you're all, you also start with a certain amount of cards. You're also trying to play them. But here you're trying to get a certain amount of points. And if you get 10 points, the game will end immediately. But every round there's magical artifacts you can choose that will help you during your turn. Um, there's some power, 
uh, cards, place of power that you can buy by gathering resources that will give you a lot of victory points. Um, there's some um, monuments, I think they're called, that you can get. So there's a lot of options, a lot of different cards. Like I said, we played twice and um, we didn't have any double cards or anything. So yeah, I also have the expansion, which adds more variability and, and demons and so on. Just check it out. It's beautiful. It plays fast. It's cool. The only knock I would have on the game is that I just want to have more time or more cards because you cannot draw new cards. You're, you're stuck with the ones you get in the beginning. Of course, you draft as well, but then you're stuck. That's it. No new cards. Um, unless maybe somewhere there's some kind of thing that allows you, but I haven't seen anything yet. Whereas with seasons, you can still draw cards during the game. Uh, various means okay anyway that was res arcana played it twice as well then we have jaipur uh, i made a how to play and review video of jaipur you can check it out um two player game played it like two or three times um and the idea is that you play three times with one person and then whoever wins twice is the winner so that would be one play even though you play thrice right you play three times so in jaipur your uh, merchants at a market you're trying to get all the goods and everything there's like goods in the middle you have some goods in your hand you have camels in your hand you can use camels to trade for the goods in the middle or you can trade one for one or two for two with your goods already um at the end of the game the amount of camels might give you five points if you have the most um, you have different kinds of goods, like for example, I think the highest value ones are gold. And let's say you cannot sell one gold, it's not, not allowed. You have to get at least two. But of course, the fewest card in the game, the fewest cards in the game are the golden ones. So once you get two, you might already be um, like uh, enticed or uh, tempted to sell them. Because for every good, there's like a stack of chips and the top chips are always worth the most. And the lower you go down the, the chip pile, the lower the value becomes. And, you know, you have gold, you have silver, uh, you have like leather, you have a lot of different things, you know. Um, and it plays very quick. The game ends when uh, three of the goods are completely sold out. Oh yeah, and if you sell like three or four or five of the same time type, you also get the bonus score uh, bonus points for that. So it's also really good. And yeah, plays really nice. Uh, it can have big point swings depending on what people do and how well they save and bluff or whatever. Yeah, really like Jaipur. It will stay in my collection forever. Uh, plays really well with two. Uh, one of the best two player games out there. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm spoiling my review maybe. But you know, go and check it out. You can see in detail how you play and everything. All right, two left, two left. The next one is Herbalism. Herbalism, I tried to sell twice before I finally played it. It was on my uh, shelf of shame. And um, I just got tired of it. I'm like, look, I need to make space. Even though it's a small box, I was like, I need to make space and it's it's basically a deduction game i don't like deduction games much i'm not good at them but eventually i did play it this month because i couldn't sell it nobody wanted to buy it and then i brought it to school uh to work and also to play with my students down the line right and i had fun i liked it even though i'm really bad at it once again i was really bad at guessing where because with herbalism you have herbs obviously and you're trying to guess the cure there's 14 cards two cards are hidden underneath the cure and so you're basically passing cards around trying to remember who has what um has like all these special uh game mechanics where for example i put my marker on a herb that says red and blue so then i can ask the person next to my next to me if I do uh, one of the actions, I can say like, okay, I'm gonna give you one card and you tell me how many cards of the other color you have me, you have, and you tell me. Or a different card will do the same thing, except I give them one color and they give me all their cards of the other color. So there's a lot of different ways you can find out who has what. But of course, if you're playing with more people, like you play with three, you have no idea what the other two are exchanging. 
So it's always like, uh, so in our first game, all of us guessed incorrectly. It was hilarious to be, to be honest. So it's actually a good game. So I'm not going to get rid of it anymore. All right. The last game, the last one is uh, Shadows in Kyoto. I love this one. Am I good at it? No, I'm not good at it, but I really love it. Have you ever played Stratego? If you played Stratego as a child, um, then this is basic Stratego in uh, typical board gamer jackets, to be honest. You have the government and you have the rebels. One person is the government, one person is the rebels. So two player game. And you have uh, five, I think, five or six. Uh, I'm gonna put up a how to play video soon. Should be, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. You have your uh, spies, basically your agents, and you're trying to get to the other side of the board with, uh, well, there's three ways you can win and lose and whatever. So one way to win is make sure you get one of your spies to the other side of the board, but your spy has to have intelligence. So your spies have numbers, zero, one, two, three. And some of them have a red dot. The ones with a red dot have real intelligence. I think you have two with real intelligence. If the other person manages to capture those two, you're dead, you lose. If you manage to get one with intelligence, all the way up to his last row or her last row, you win. If the other person captures three of your agents who don't have intelligence, you win. And the other side, uh, vice versa as well. If you capture three of them and they have no intelligence, you also lose. So it's, it's difficult. You can't just go out and attack like crazy because you'll end up dead because then you'll just push forward you know, those agents that are useless, you'll defeat them and so on. And also they have value of zero and three, obviously a zero will defeat a three. Okay, otherwise zeros are useless. And there's also two expansions in the box. Um, one gives you uh, special powers, like a asymmetric power that you draft in the beginning of the game. And the second one gives you items. So when you, three of your um, spies or agents they also have a little star on the board and if any of those three die then you get to activate one of your very powerful uh cards like one could be like okay i want to see what the value of that guy is or something like that okay so or when you die you can attack somebody else on the board as a, as a like a last ditch effort and take someone with you or whatever so very powerful things short games don't take long because Oh, I forgot to say, actually, on your turn, you will have a bunch of cards in your hand. Some are locations to move your agents, and some are tactics that allow, allow you to do special moves that the other person doesn't know about. Uh, well, they'll know when you do it, but not when you when you have it in your hand, obviously. If you start with four locations and two tactics, and then from then on, every turn, you play one card and you draw one card. That's as easy as it is. It looks nice, plays very quickly, Small box game, two players. I love it. That's it. So that's it for this month. I played 15 different games and I think I managed to get up to 21 or 22 plays. I don't know. I'll uh, insert a picture of my uh, BG Stats app. I can suggest the app to anyone. It's amazing. Um, it's a really, really good app. I'm not getting paid for this, sadly. But if you love board games and you want to just look back at like, like let's say I play Terraforming Mars tonight. I put the score in, maybe four months from now I play again and people ask me, so what do people score in this game? Well, last time we played, we had this and this and this. You can refer to it, it's just fun, you know. Um, yeah, anyway, this was uh, the first of the yeah. series. So in February, I'll make another one at the end of February and yeah. God only knows what, what I will have played then. All right. This was me. And uh, if you like this kind of videos and unboxings and how to plays and everything else, please like and subscribe. You know how it goes. Okay. All right. See ya. Bye-bye.